I had an incredible experience in May of 1977. The divorce was final. I was not interested in dating. I was uh, turned off to the idea of ever remarrying. And I uh, got an invitation. This is, part, this is God's sovereignty at work now. I got an invitation to go to Muskegon, Michigan. Pastor's name was John Foss. What a guy. And I stayed in his home for three or four days. I was there for a weekend service, and he knew I didn't have anything until the following Wednesday, a couple hundred miles away. And he said, if you'd like, you can stay here, and uh, we can play ping pong. He loved to play ping pong, and I'm a bit of a ping pong player, so he and I became friends on the ping pong table. And I remember the morning that I was to drive to my Wednesday uh, event, that morning John and I went out to breakfast and he had gotten to know me pretty well and I remember him asking me, do you think you'd ever remarry? And I said, not a chance. Well, I had been watching the television program, Hour of Power, probably before I met Fred, maybe a year, perhaps. And I really enjoyed the program. And he sang almost every week, so I was familiar with who he was and always enjoyed his singing. I remember always, if I was busy and I, he'd start to sing, I'd always go to the TV and watch him. The saints and angels song. And then um, I was visiting my girlfriend who lived in Battle Creek. I lived in Kalamazoo, and Battle Creek's about 20 miles away. And I was at her home one day, and uh, there was a pastor came over to visit, and he was talking about he was going to have one of the um, guests of our power sing at his church. And so it was going to be in a few months. And so I told my girlfriend, oh, be sure and tell me um, when it's happening, because I'd love to hear him sing. And I was singing at an Assembly of God church on a Wednesday night, and uh, my sound man at that time was Benny Jetson. And uh, Benny had set up the sound, and I was just prior to the service, sort of wandering around in the halls uh, behind the platform where nobody was. And uh, coming out of the ladies' room were a couple of women and a kid. And, and uh, one of them said, oh, there you are. When I saw him, when I first got at the church, he was walking down the hallway. And, and I saw him, and I go, oh, there you are. And he kind of looked at me like, well, who are you? And I said, I'm planning on moving to California. And I just wonder if you could give me a few names of people that I could contact. And, um, you know, send a resume to him. And he said, sure, I'll do that. And then after the service, uh, she came up to me and asked me to autograph a couple of albums. And then I, um, we said goodbye, and he just said, um, by the way, if you ever moved out to California, you know, look us up. Well, us, I assumed, was his family, because I didn't, at that point, know that he was single. Uh, that was the end of it. Went back to the hotel, and Benny and I were talking, and Benny said, did you see that pretty girl there tonight? I said, yeah. And he began to talk about her. And Vinny was not talking about the same person I was. He was talking about the minister of music's wife, who was a very attractive blonde girl. And uh, I said, well, you know, she was pretty, but there was another one who was even prettier. And I was talking about uh, the gal that I had met and then signed the records afterward, and her name was Judy. I'd heard on the radio about a week or so later that there was going to be another concert right near my, my parents and I wanted my brother to go so I called him and he, he couldn't go but my parents said they'd like to go. So I took my daughter, my youngest daughter, Christy, and we went and um, sat with my parents and he came out and he sang this song and I thought, he's kind of looking at me. In the morning of my life I shall look to the sunrise. I came out to do my opening number, and sitting in the second row was this Judy girl. And she had uh, four or five people with her. And uh, I remembered her. And so I didn't, you know, I just watched him. And so in between, sort of segue between the first and second song, he goes, oh, now I remember. And my daughter goes, Mom, <laughs> he's noticing you. She was drop-dead gorgeous. I had no interest in her, in a boy-girl thing, uh, because she was, even though very attractive physically and her personality, but she was way too young. 
Oh, uh, see, this would be 1977, which meant I was 41 years old. And uh, besides that, like I told John Foss, no way, I'm not interested in anybody. Then afterwards, um, he was talking to people, and I, uh, well, I, I don't remember how, I guess I was talking to his sound man, Benny, he was selling records or something, and so then it was about time to go, and he came over towards me, and he just started wanting to talk. I came back over, and Judy introduced me to her daughter, Christy, and uh, I realized Judy couldn't have been as young as I thought she was, because Christy, I figured was about 10 or maybe 11, and I'm good enough at math to know that Judy, I had her, under, I understood her to be about 19 to maybe 26 years old. That's how I described her to Benny. And I can quick figure out that she couldn't possibly be that age with a 10 year old daughter. But I, I said to Christy, uh, I said, uh, how old are you? And she said, 14. I'm going, whoa, my math works quick. She said, yeah, I got a sister 18. I'm going, whoa. And all of a sudden, I'm finding myself interested in knowing more about who is this Judy girl, the mother. And uh, so I said, could I talk to you for just a minute? And I, we stepped aside, and I said, I want to tell you something I just did. I was standing at the door saying goodbye to people, and this one lady came up to me, and before she left, she said, I really enjoyed the service tonight. Thank you so much for talking about your children. Next time, it'd be great to hear about your wife. You do have one, don't you? So I quickly said, yes, I do. And I, of course, I lied. So anyway, um, that sort of started our conversation. And I said, well, letting uh, each other know that we were not married. Because I said, well, I know what that's all about. I've been through that, too. Uh, we, we sort of connected real quick there. I had to go out of town for a couple days down to Missouri or something. And we made arrangements to meet uh, for breakfast at a coffee shop in Kalamazoo. And we met at the coffee shop and uh, we came in and sat in this booth and the first thing I said to Judy was, can I see your driver's license? Now that must have startled her. But the reason I did that is because I could, I could not believe that anyone that looks like that and had the energy and the personality of that she has could possibly be between 19 and 26. Well, she was a couple days from being 39. And of course I was blown away, but I was kind of excited. I thought, wow. We spent a lot more time at that day than we had planned. And so it was really kind of nice. And so uh, I felt very comfortable with him. And that was the beginning of our relationship that day. There was more to that day, but that, uh, that was a significant time. A very, very special person, and the more I know her and the more I uh, have uh, done with her, the more I realize that this is a one of a kinder. How in the world did God ever make such a special person as Judy? I just believe God brought us together because I don't know how else it could have happened. Judy had, she told me that she wanted, she had for years said, I'm going to move to California. She had come out to California to check out the situation before she moved. She wanted to see what was available, where she might move, etc., etc. I helped her find a place that was a couple miles away from where I lived. Because I had come to California, we looked at apartments, he showed me areas that would be good to live in. I remember one day she was over at my house, and I was on the phone doing whatever, and I was smoking. And... I was on the phone for quite a while, and I noticed that while I was on the phone and smoking, she was crying. So I got off the phone, I said, what's up? She said, well, she said, I uh, just saw you smoking, and I could see that smoke going in and going into you, and she said, I, I just, I knew what it was doing to you. And that's all she said. And that's kind of how Judy is most of the time. She, she knows how to say, I love you, without necessarily using those words, although she certainly says, I love you lots of times, too. Then I came back home and decided to pack up my things and move. I helped her move out to California. A bunch of her friends came over, loaded up the truck. We drove cross-country and drug her car behind in a U-Haul. 
uh, pulling it, and I drove it. And I remember driving across, and I remember we pulled into a gas station and filled up, and I got back in the car and I started to light up. And I said, you know what? I quit. I'm not going to smoke anymore. And I remember as we drove along that uh, I talked to her about my feelings and my, my addiction to this and how I, I was upset by it. And I said, uh, I'm quitting. I remember crying. We, we were driving along and it was a real nice, intimate, emotional moment. Then I got rid of my cigarettes. And we drove to Denver and that evening we stayed at some friends of hers or relatives' house. And uh, uh, while we were there, evening time, I, I was having a nicotine fit. I excused myself, went out to the truck and lit up. And uh, I didn't find out until years later that Judy saw me do that. She'd gone out to see, where's he, Where, what happened? She saw me light up, never said a thing. And uh, that was the last cigarette I ever had. We talked a little bit about it, but he'd never asked me at this one point, and we were sitting around the table at his home that Christy was over there that night. Anyway, he looked at me and says, will you marry me? And I said, yes. And Christy turns around and says, what are you doing? What are you talking about? And on July 1st of 78, we got married. And uh, it was a small wedding. My parents were there. And uh, some friends of ours, their wedding gift to us was the reception. Uh, that's, when, that's when it all started, July 1st, 1978.